Through holes do not have to be round. The bore float wafer on the left has football shaped holes. Those on the right are rectangular but with rounded corners. These shapes were selected by the customer to minimize chipping, eliminating the sharp corners associated with square or rectangular holes. This is another example where the flexibility of photo machining can be employed to more effectively align with customer needs. Sapphire is an extremely tough and durable material and is now being used in several electronics applications. The examples shown here represent through holes in a 4-inch wafer and a 200 micron deep cavity in a 2-inch wafer. Photo machining is an ideal way to create holes, cavities, and other features where most conventional machining techniques would fail. A popular application is to use sapphire with holes to mount glass wafers, which can then be ground and polished, ultra-thin, for use in MEMS applications. Earlier it was mentioned that there is a taper angle associated with photo machining. It's a natural result of the abrasion process during powder blasting. The diagram shown depicts what happens while producing a hole through a substrate. As one progresses from left to right, the entry hole size, defined by the photoresist, remains the same. Once breakthrough occurs, the exit side begins to enlarge. The longer the process, the larger the exit hole becomes, to a point. There's an aspect ratio limitation of 2 to 1 for glass and 1 to 1 for ceramics. In glass, the taper angle ends up about 12 degrees. In the harder ceramic materials, such as silicon carbide, the taper angle will end up about 16 degrees. It's a function of how easily, or not, the material is removed by the process. An important note here is that the exit hole opening can be precisely controlled in order to obtain a specified exit hole diameter. Now many customers have found that the taper angle is quite useful for things like wire bonding, inspection, air passage, or fluid flow. Where the entry and exit hole diameters must be the same, photo machining can be done from both sides. It will result in an hourglass effect as seen by the diagram on the right. Here the opening in the center of the hourglass can also be controlled to a specified diameter within the limits of the allowable aspect ratios. This pattern was produced in very thin quartz, about 250 microns. Another advantage with photo machining is the ability to handle and machine very fragile substrates. The cavity created in the middle of this quartz wafer resulted in a thinning to less than 100 microns and yet did not crack or break. Also, note the clear areas of the quartz glass, or those areas not machined. Both sides of the substrate are fully protected during the entire process to prevent damage and scratching of all unmachined surfaces. Photo machining has recently met the challenge of creating very thin membranes for use in sensors applications. Selectively thinning certain areas of the substrate is critical and must be controlled within microns in order to perform well. Shown graphically here, the requirement was to thin the membrane areas to 75 microns and control them within plus or minus 5 microns. Process control is paramount, not only just for one part, but for repeatability between parts. Here are a couple examples of photo machining into alumina. Both are 95% alumina, one shown with 1.7 millimeter deep channels and the other with round blind holes. The holes in this case could have been square or rectangular cavities for chip mounting, which is often required in MEMS applications. Another interesting application is creating a textured surface to help with adhesive bonding or lubrication carrying channels for mechanical seals. In most cases, the texturing or channels would be done selectively, and therefore only in the areas requiring this feature. Photo machining makes quick work of selected pattern texturing in any hard surface. This is another example of mechanical or chemical sealing between two mating surfaces. Here, selective removal of material allows for seal integrity as well as the introduction of lubrication or chemical reagents. Mentioned earlier is the use of photo machining for the selective removal of coatings to create specific conductive or insulating patterned features. Here, even micron-thin conductive metal coatings can be precisely removed to expose a dielectric material below. The example shown here illustrates the advantage of photo machining to selectively remove multiple coating patterns at the same time. Graphite is another material well suited for photo machining. 
Whether for fuel cells or EDM applications, graphite will machine quickly and with the precision of a photolithography process. Note again the multiple patterns in the one-inch square graphite block on the right machined simultaneously with photo machining. Virtually any pattern, size, or shape on hard, brittle materials is possible with Iconics photo machining. While not a replacement for other methods, photo machining services from Iconics offers value at a lower cost and is often the only alternative way to achieve some very unique features in a variety of substrate materials. To find out more about this service and what it will cost, send Iconics a drawing and receive a response within 24 hours. Here is just a partial sampling of customers who have and continue to benefit from Iconics photo machining services. Through holes, blind holes, channels, maces, multiple patterns and features, selective coating removal and texturing are no challenge for photo machining. If photo machining makes sense for your application, Iconics will work to establish the best fit to satisfy your needs. Iconics wishes to thank you for taking the time to view this presentation on photo machining. For additional information, please feel free to contact Iconics at the phone numbers or email address listed here. And be sure to visit the Iconics Industrial website at www.iconicsindustrial.com for a complete description and understanding of photo machining.